Yeah, but what time is it? It's 8 o'clock, Costello. We're on the air for PBQ Gasoline here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Transcribed Abbott and Costello Show with their new singing discovery, Susan Miller and Matty Malnick Orchestra. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Costello, <laughs> what are you, what are you so happy about? Well, it's wonderful here in California, Abbott. The sun is shining, the flowers in their bud, the bees in their honey, the cats in their honey. Wait a minute, Costello, cats don't have any honey. No? Then why does our cat stay out until four o'clock every morning? Nah. <laughs> Look, never mind that. <laughs> What are you doing with that knife and that gun stuck in your belt? Abbott, all California drivers carry a knife and gun. What for? So they can shoot up one street and cut down the other. <laughs> well, you better drive carefully tonight because it's New Year's Eve and the streets are very crowded. You're telling me, coming down here, a girl, she blew a horn right in my ear. So what? Took me two years to get it out. <laughs> Our whole family is going to stay up until midnight, Abbott. To welcome in the uh, New Year? No. None of them have worked in a year and a half. And they want to hear what a factory whistle sounds like. <laughs> well, I suppose they'll, they'll all be celebrating tonight. Oh, indeed. All but my Uncle Mike. Aunt May made him sign a pledge. It was as easy as a twist of the wrist. Now, how did she do it? She twisted his wrist. <laughs> hey, Abbott. What have you got in that big bottle? Uh, champagne. That's uh, Mum's. All that champagne is Mum's? Certainly. Brother, will your mum be loaded tonight? No, 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 Costello. It's mum champagne. That's the best kind. Uh, when you open the cork, pop. The champagne is mum, and the cork, pop. That's right. <laughs> That's a pretty picture. Mum gets all the champagne, and pop winds up with the cork. <laughs> Why didn't you come to my house tonight, Costello? Let me have it. I remember your party last year. What games we played? Drawing pictures, right. and then... Hey, we... wait a minute. Remember how I drew a picture of a taxi cab on the wall? Yeah, and at 4 o'clock, we all got in it and drove home? I... <laughs> Rock, will, you keep... will you keep quiet, Costello? Now, that's enough from you. Give my friend here a chance at the microphone. I'd like to bring you greetings and best wishes, too, from some men you ought to know. There's Jim Anderson up in San Francisco. George Clay, Los Angeles. Daniel Brenning in Walnut, California, and A.W. Thornton out in Ontario. And then, too, there's Herman Geldo Apodaco in Cucamonga, and another Los Angeles man, Everett L. Miller. Who are they? Well, they're some of the new PDQ independent dealers, some automotive experts, men who operate their own filling stations, who decided that PDQ has the quality, the reputation, and the value they insist on giving their customers. That's why these new PDQ dealers, like so many before them, have decided to stake their personal business success on the PDQ name. We're proud to welcome these men into the PDQ family. More and more independent dealers are selecting PDQ as the gasoline to sell. For these men know that what's good for your car is good for their business. And they know that motorists get more for their money when they fill up with PDQ. And now, Abbott and Costello. Costello, Costello, put that gun down. What's the idea of bringing that gun to the studio? Oh, that ain't a real revolver, Abbott. It's a cigarette lighter. I'll show you how it works. I'll put, it, I'll put the cigar in my mouth, and when I pull the cigarette, we'll light my cigar. Now, you'd better be careful. That's a pretty short cigar. Watch out for your nose. Don't worry. Oh, well, things don't smell too good around here anyway. <laughs> you talk, Dave. What's the idea of having that big piece of, that big piece of mistletoe, mistletoe pin on your hat? Christmas is through. Yes, but I ain't. Yeah. <laughs> you idiot. The old year passes out in just a few hours. And you won't be far behind it. Oh, cut that out. <laughs> Last year, you beat it by eight lengths. <laughs> that 
Costello. What's that you've got on your hand? It's a media card from Fibber McGee. What does it say? I don't know. You have to wax it three times a day for three months before the message comes out. <laughs> That's it. Oh, continue. Thank you. What are you made up for, Rabbit? What's that thing you're wearing? <laughs> Oh, it's a sport coat my wife gave me for Christmas. I thought it was a little too short for a bathroom. Nah, you don't guard yourself. You look tired, Lou. I am tired. The bus was so crowded, I had to stand up all the way into Hollywood. You did? Yes, my legs got so numb, I had to pinch them to see if they were mine. Is that so? Yep, my case comes up tomorrow. I... <laughs> well, that's no excuse for being late. Costello, what takes you so long to get here every week? Hey, what do you do in the morning? Oh, Abbott, I'm a busy man. I'll give you a brief outline of a day in the life of Luke Costello. At six o'clock, my alarm clock rings. I jump up and shut it off. I said I shut it off. I said I shut it off! We're trying to keep down a budget on a show, but I think we could afford a better alarm. Oh, never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Quietly, I open the door of my room. Quickly, I close it. Come back in the room. What happened? I forgot to dress. <laughs> After I finished dressing, I open the door again. the idea of all those locks and bolts on the door. I can't be too careful, Abbott. There's a gorgeous red-headed bubble dancer lives across the hall from me. And you put all those locks and bolts on your door? No, he did. Uh... <laughs> I'll continue. Go ahead. Well, I don't want to disturb anybody, so I tiptoed down the hall. I'm wearing my heavy underwear, you know. <laughs> now I sneak down the back stairs. There's no back stairs. I step outside into a typically beautiful California day. I forgot there was a slight fog. All right, then what did you do? I strolled... <laughs> I strolled leisurely down the street, tipping my hat to the left and right. I pick up about eight bucks that way every morning. <laughs> Costello, you'd make a perfect mate for an idiot. Thanks, Abbott, but you'll have to ask my mother first. I... <laughs> Costello, are you going to turn over a new lease this uh, year? After this year, I won't say any more nasty things behind your back. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Hereafter, I'm going to say them right to your face. I... <laughs> and another thing, I'm giving up drinking hard liquor. You dummy, you don't drink hard liquor. I know, that's what makes it easy to give it up. <laughs> Hello, boy. Well, it's Susan Miller. Hello, Susan. How are you? I'm fine. You look lovely tonight. Would you give me a kiss? Well, I might give you a good, innocent kiss. A what? A good, innocent kiss. Don't you know what good, innocent kisses are? No. What good are they? <laughs> well, never mind that. Why, why, don't you take, why don't you take Susan to the Rose Bowl tomorrow, Costello? Come on. Oh, no, thanks. Oh, all right. Don't go to the game with me. Ah, uh, that's no way to talk, Costello. After all, they only hold the Rose Bowl game... One day a year. Yes, and I found out why. Why? It takes the other 364 days to get home. <laughs> oh, it isn't that crowded, Lewis. Oh, no. Two years ago, the people were packing so tight that the girl next to me fainted. I picked her up in my arms and started for the exit. Yes? Yes. Two first aid men rushed over to me and said, We'll take her. I said, Oh, no, you don't. There's more in there. Go in and get your own. <laughs> What you've done, she'll never go with you, though. Well, I'm going alone anyway, Abbott. I wouldn't miss that Rose Bowl game for anything. You know, my whole family are football players. They are? Oh, sure. My oldest brother was a fullback, and my youngest brother was a tackle. And when I was born, my mother looked at me and said, Pop, this is the end. <laughs> Costello, I don't think you ever played football. Oh, no? I was captain of the Cucamonga Wash Women. We were a scrub team. <laughs> that must have been some football team. I'll say it was. 
We had the cutest little redhead cheerleader. Every Saturday when a game started, I would grab that little cheerleader and run down the field. Grab the cheerleader? Yeah. You're supposed to grab the ball. You grab what you like, and I'll grab what I like. <laughs> now, I'll ask you a few questions about uh, football. Now, what team has uh, the best line? Michigan. All right. Who has the best offense? Theo Plenty. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Who has the best offense? George Tech. And who has the best back? Eddie Lamar. <laughs> Costello, pay attention. Now, let's say you're in a game. The opening gun is fired, and the fullback kicks off. What do you do? I put on my Dick Tracy bag and grab the guy who fired the gun. What for? <laughs> you just said that some guy fired a gun and the fullback kicked off. I know a murder when I see one. I'm... <laughs> I'll forget him. Now, the, the team springs into action. The captain fades back to make a pass. That's a pretty sight. One of his best friends just kicked off, and this guy starts to clap him. <laughs> <laughs> Attention. Now they're in formation. The ball is stepped from center, and the quarterback makes a hole in the left guard. <laughs> this is terrible. First, the fullback kicks off. Now somebody put a hole through the left guard. Abbott, call the FBI. Get the Lone Ranger. Get Jane Russell. What do you want with Jane Russell? You get her. I'll think of something. <laughs> <laughs> Castella, keep your mind on the football game now. Now the halfback tries a line plunge and loses two feet. And I suppose nobody worries about that either. Certainly not. What's two feet to the halfback? Well, I guess if he had to, he could run through the rest of the game on his knees. <laughs> Don't worry, on the next play, he gets those two feet back. And probably a couple of more. It'll have four feet. Certainly. Brother, is he in trouble? Wh what do you mean? Have you tried to buy shoes lately? No. <laughs> There's a game going on. Look, time has just been called. The players are refreshing themselves from the water bucket. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> The tackle just stumbled and kicked the bucket. <laughs> How can you stand there laughing when these four fellas are out there dying like flies? <laughs> Let's get on with the game. They're calling time out again. Looks like trouble. Uh-oh. What's uh -oh. the matter now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the fellas just sprained his little finger. And his teammates are worried. This is serious. This is serious? So far, three guys have been slaughtered and nobody says a word. All of a sudden, some sissy sprains his little finger... Everybody's running for a doctor. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The opposing team left the, the ball and got it, and the end runs out and, and falls on the ball. Now the referee is, is running out. He's jumping up and down, waving his arms. That means the ball is dead. That did it, Abbott. I didn't say nothing when you said that the guy fired that gun and the poor fullback kicked off. I hold back my tears when a quarterback stabbed the hole into the left guard. I only stiffen a little when the halfback lost his two feet, and I tried to be brave when that tackle kicked the bucket. But when you stand there and tell me that the poor little ball is dead, you have not only blackened the fair name of football, but you have cast aspersions on the clean American sport of parcheesi, croquet, dominoes, not to mention skip the rope. <laughs> more hijinks in a minute, folks, but first, a few remarks on another subject. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we pause in the midst of this gay hilarity to bring you word of the late, the scientific, the interesting, and instructive aspect of what learned men of many leading institutions have called the internal combustion motor and you. Step in closer, please. Give those in the chance, uh, in the rear chance to hear. Now you, sir, is your tank low? Not you, Lou, the man in the purple coop. Very well, sir, I have here an object that is 5,280 feet long. It's called a mile. You will find two to six of these miles. Extra ones, you understand? In each and every gallon of PDQ gasoline you buy. In the untutored mind, it is a feat of most uncommon magic that so many, many long and happy miles of motoring can be put into the small space of a single tank full of PDQ. But, get the windshield too, Lou, scientific tests have shown time and again that the miracle men of PDQ have harnessed the energy of petroleum to give you more for your dollar. Don't take my word for it. Don't strain, feel, sniff, taste, or listen for those extra PDQ miles. Don't just put a tank full in your car and watch. Observe closely and you shall see the extra PDQ mileage on your own speedometer. Not an advertising stunt, not a special offer, but a bona fide transaction between you and the independent PDQ dealer. PDQ gas is sold during the performance and afterwards at your neighborhood PDQ station. Kindly remain in your seats now for the Abbott and Costello Show. Vivacious Susan Miller with Maddie Malnick and the orchestra. I met a man I met that don't get yourself in a sweat. 
When things look great, the shrug and say, it must have been from my ass. So if your temper gets in the top hand, all you gotta do is just stop and pass that piece. I bury that hat you'd like to talk to all kids with all that who's the dip of do. If you're feeling mad as a wet hen, mad as you can possibly get, then pass that piece. I bury that tomahawk like those shit to make sure it's useful to pick. Don't be crazy. Try to eat a little restraint. Fold that handy and wipe off all of that war paint. And if you find yourself in a fury, be your own judge and your own jury. Pass that piece I bet that hat you'd like to talk to. Oh, shit, the false shadow, who's the shit, the wall, do. Write that apology and the it when you quarrel it. When the patches has that piece, I bet that hat you'd like to talk to. Oh, shit, the false shadow, who's the shit, the wall, and those shit, the next chair, a piece of both the text, and those shit. Get the turkey, dig a piece, cook your tongue, go chow, and over the chicken rolls. With old acquaintance, be forgot, and friends you hold so dear. But when you hear the bells at twelve o'clock, the good humor man is here. <laughs> Oh, All right, cut it out, cut it out, Costello. Oh, Listen, will you cut it out? It's not over. Come on, It's not over quite yet. Look, now, I want you to start the new year. I want you to start... Will you listen to me, please? I want you to start the new year with a resolution. Huh? I want you to start the new year with a resolution. Why? Why should I start a resolution? I'm satisfied with the government we got now. No, no. <laughs> I mean, don't you want to start the new year with a clean sheet? Yes, and clean pillowcases, too. <laughs> Castell, I'm talking about good resolutions. Things you are going to do next year. Oh, them kind of resolutions. Yes. I made a whole list of them. I wrote them down on a piece of paper. First, I will not misplace anything. What's next? I don't know. I can't find the paper. <laughs> Can you remember any, any more of them? Oh, yes. I promise to give up gambling. I'll never make another bet. You'll never stick to that. How much you want to bet? I... <laughs> Here's my list, Abbott. Resolution number one, stop spending my money on girls. Number two, stop flirting with girls. Number three, stop necking with girls. Good. What's number four? Ignore numbers one, two, and three. <laughs> you, you have nothing on your mind but girls. Were you out with a girl last night? No, I spent the evening at home. I lit a warm, cheery fire in my living room. But my landlord objected. Why? I don't have a fireplace. <laughs> Never mind that. <laughs> what is that you have uh, rolled up in your pocket there? It's a beautiful calendar for next year. Mr. Schultz, my butcher, gave it to me. And look, it's got a picture of Mr. Schultz's grandfather on it. You idiot, that's a picture of Father Time. See, he's got a long white beard. And he's got a sickle in his hand. So, you know what that sickle is for? To cut his beard? No, no. <laughs> whenever, whenever you see Father Time, you'll find the old man's sickle. The old man's sickle? Certainly. Why don't they call a doctor? Well, <laughs> they shouldn't let an old man run around sickle. He's liable to catch the hoople buffle. <laughs> that could develop in the step the cockle of the nickel. He'll wind up in a hospital. No, I'm not. <laughs> care much for that All right. Uh, the yuku? The sickle I'm talking about. I don't go. Will you listen to me? The sickle I'm talking about. The sickle I'm talking about is the side. Huh? It's the side. What side? What size are you on? My uh, size. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You just said that the old man was sickle on the side. If he's sickle on the right side, it could be very dangerous. He might have a tender sickle. Oh, no, no. Look, <laughs> look that's the father time in his sickle represents the old year. And this little baby's picture alongside him on the calendar is the new year. Oh, Abbott, he's a cute little baby, but he certainly wears expensive clothes. Expensive clothes? Look at the price tag on his diaper. 1948. <laughs> And 1948 is a leap year. In California, every year is leap year. No, I can see you don't look at the dates on that calendar. I can see you don't look at the pedestrians on Hollywood and Vine. <laughs> leap year is different from other years. Well, what makes it different? Well, it's the year when girls uh, pursue the men. It's the year the girls chase men. It's the year when the girls trick the men into burying them. Any questions? Yes. What makes it different? <laughs> <laughs> 
Leap year comes once every four years. It's controlled by the stars. Have you ever studied the stars? <laughs> yes. Lots of nights I lay up in my backyard and look up at a big diaper. But... <laughs> that big... That big dipper. That you don't, big... you don't know the stars. That big diaper. You don't know my backyard. All right, <laughs> Pickles. That was a good one. Never mind. How do you manage to accumulate such an abundance of ignorance? I keep in touch with my congress. Oh. <laughs> now, uh, tonight is New Year's Eve. Now, what are your plans? I'm taking Ruby Pool Cue to a party, and we're going to play that new game I invented, Pony Express. How do you play Pony Express? Just like post office, with a little more horsing around. I... <laughs> that uh, Ruby uh, poop you Well, uh, why not, bud? I took her to a party last night, and if it wasn't for Ruby, the party would have been a failure. Why? They couldn't find the bottle opener, and she was the only girl there with buck teeth. <laughs> Rastella, why do you go steady with such a homely girl as Ruby? Homely girls are the best kind to go steady with. How do you figure that out? If some guy takes her away from me, I don't lose nothing. Rastella... <laughs> <laughs> Ruby, your pool cue is not for you. She's uneducated. Oh, she is not. Ruby went to college. She went to Notre Dame. Now, wait a minute. How could Ruby go to Notre Dame? That's a boys' school. Yeah, but if you play football, they don't ask no questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you won't make any mistakes in the new year. I'm going to get you a horoscope. A what? A horoscope. You know, a horoscope. I don't know horoscope, but I know it's about a horse height. Oh, come on, Rastella. We're going to visit an astrologer and see what's in store for you for the coming year. You are in the presence of the great Madame Zaza. That's a funny name. <laughs> quiet, Rastella. Quiet. Madame Zaza, I brought Costello here to get uh, his horoscope for 1948. Very well. Now, Mr. Costello, tell me, what sign were you born under? What time was I born under? That's right. This kid thinks I was born under a billboard. No, no, no. Because <laughs> yes, she's talking about a zodiac sign. Yes. What is your sign? Taurus the bull or Leo the lion? Burma the king. <laughs> Never mind that. Tell her what day you were born. Thursday. How do you know it was Thursday? Well, the next day we had fish. I have... Uh... <laughs> your future by the bumps on your head. But I ain't got no bumps on my head. I will now predict your future by the bumps on your head. That's <laughs> uh, Costello. In 1948, you will be very lucky. You're a good businessman. She's right, Abbott. Madam Zaza, I would have been a wealthy man today except for one thing. Well, what's that? I never had any money. <laughs> Finish reading the bumps Let's on Costello's head. That was the funny one. <laughs> Pickle was the funny one. Hold your head down. Go ahead, read those and bumps, Madam Zaza. This bump shows me that you will meet a gorgeous blonde. And this bump shows me that she will hug you and kiss you and hug you and kiss you and then... Tell me more. Well, I can't. You don't have any more bumps. Madam Zaza, hit me once more. <laughs> Costello, shy and bashful. She's right, Abbott. I never told you this. I'm so bashful I keep the bureau in my room turned toward the wall. Why? So its drawers won't show. <laughs> I would rather go back to Sickle. All right, never mind this thing. Uh, enough of this. Madam Zaza, what does uh, Costello owe you for the reading? Ten dollars. But if he pays me $20, I'll give him a lucky gypsy trinket. Okay, here's the $20. And here's your trinket. Hey, hey, this is nothing but a glass of water. Well, <laughs> go ahead and drink it. <laughs> yeah, but I think that Madame says that's nuts. Did you, did you notice all the geraniums she had? Well, that's nothing. Lots of people have geraniums. Growing out of their heads? Oh, <laughs> come on, let's walk back to town. I suppose you're uh, going to Ruby's party? No, I'm going to stick with you, Abbott. We'll have a big New Year's Eve. Now, that's fine. Hey, Abbott. 
Hey, Abbott, the people of that house are, aren't they having a doozy of a party? Come on, let's crash it. Come on, we can have a lot of fun. Whoopee! Hey, hey, whose house is this? I don't know. I just got here myself. Hey, come here. Help me throw this can out the window. Come on, let's live. Okay, here she goes. Hey, Abbott, boy, is this fun. Come on, here. Throw this lamp out the window. Whoopee! Hey, give me the lamp, Costello. Happy New Year! Like that at your house. Don't stop me, Abbott. I'm rolling. Here goes the sofa. Hey, hey, Abbott. Come on, let's rip the pictures off the wall. Hey, what do you know? Here's a picture of me. <laughs> me? Hey, Abbott. back in just a few seconds, folks, but first we want you to hear this. Tonight, we bring you the only commercial you'll hear this New Year's Eve that is not flavored with Auld Lang Syne. This one is to be flavored with PDQ mileage stretching gasoline. Now, we'll forgive you your past purchases of, uh, well, other brands. No, no, no more for me, thank you. And we'll turn over a new leaf, a PDQ leaf. No, no, I'm doing fine, thank you. And beginning tomorrow, or maybe the day after, we expect you to drive into the neighborhood PDQ service station and fill her up. No, 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 really, I'm quite happy. Fill her up with that superb power, that traditional extra mileage, that dependable service which have made PDQ gasoline and the independent service station men who sell it the favorites of so many motorists low these many years. And you want to know something else? This old world would be a better place if more people used PDQ gasoline. That's what. Okay, now. No, just one lump. Now, I think we're probably running a little late tonight, so you may or may not hear 1947 final thing of the Abbott and Costello show. Let's stick around and find out. Here are Abbott and Costello with our final words. Well, Costello, in a few hours, we'll be starting a new year, 1948. And I want you to save your money next year. I will, Abbott. I'll start right now saving on stamps for New Year's cards. I'm sending my greetings right now. A happy new year to everybody, including my family, your family, Joe Bazo, Mary Bazo, Uncle Artie Stebbin, Aunt May and Uncle Mike, my mother, my sister. Happy new year, everybody, everybody in the world. New year. Happy new year to everybody all over the world. Tonight at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Charles Vanden, featuring Susan Miller and Maddie Malnick Orchestra. This is Michael.